This video is made for mature audiences. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hey, hope everyone's had a good one. I didn't think I was going to get another promo uh, title so soon, but here we are. <laughs> After my last one, which is only about like a week or so ago. So, but anyway, welcome to um, welcome to today's uh, indie game on our indie block. Uh, program here. Uh, today we're playing The Hundred Year Kingdom. Now this, um, this game was released on Nintendo Switch. It is also a PC port. Um, in a nutshell, it's a pocket-sized civilization, civilization builder. If anybody's ever played a game like um, like the actual game Civilization, or uh, they played a game called Populous way back in the day, similar vein. But I say it's pocket-sized because a lot of those very daunting um, difficult mechanics have been eliminated and the game is a little bit simpler a little bit more um, approachable for most people so um, I did a test of it and it seems like the game time for a hundred years is roughly about 35 minutes or so depending on how you play it um, so I'm gonna plan on 45 minutes again like so we might go a little bit over depending on what kind of uh, events hit us and what happens so the way the game is, you're a world builder, you have an oracle, um, you unlock oracles in different maps as you progress through the game. Uh, we are going to be playing the first one, even though I did unlock one due to my test, and then we'll just kind of play through the 100 years and see how it goes. Um, so yeah, it's uh, basic settings, uh, music, I'm going to turn the music off slightly, sound effects, controller style. Um, the resolution, I actually have a set on a smaller than normal resolution. I tried playing it on uh, 1920 by 1080 but the problem is because it's not a full screen game, <laughs> uh, there's no way to full screen it. It kind of like hangs off the edge of the screen so I'm actually playing on a smaller than normal resolution. So uh, You could put the game speed and the language that you want here. Alright. And we're gonna go ahead and start. Uh, go to world settings. So when you start off, you get the world of vegetation. Uh, as you play through, you can unlock all these other ones. Or is it the world of plains? I think it's the no. no it's the world of vegetation. You get the world of culture when you uh, complete the world of vegetation, and also you get a second oracle. So. Uh, it shows you the previous score that you did, uh, where you had your culture, your food, and your production. Food and production are basically currency in this game, so if you have food and production, you can expand more stuff. If you don't have it, obviously you can't do anything. Culture is something you collect during the course of the game, and it is used for some things, but the more important things are your food and production, so you want to make sure that you have a plethora of them. The game also gives you... Um, things called legacies which are like specialized landmarks based at the real world places you know like the towers of, you know like the uh, pyramids of giza um lighthouse alexandria etc etc so uh it's uh they give you perks depending on what type of uh structures you have out so you have to pay attention to that and make sure that you build structures to match those things and then you can pick one of the whatever of the uh, oracles that you unlock. So uh, right now you s you start off with uh, Amaterasu, um, which is Japanese, and um, you can unlock the rest of these. Like you can get Gaia from Greek mythology, uh, Freya from Norse, uh, Inanna from Sumerian, and er uh, I can never pronounce the Celtic one. I think it's Arian, Arian, Arian Rod, or something like that. I can never pronounce that one. I see, I've always had trouble with that one. I used to play a Celtic game, and I can never pronounce it too. All right, but we're gonna use uh, Amaterasu here just because that's the one that we start off with. And each one too also gets their own little um, uh, legacy thing that you can get. So like area. Arian uh, starts off with uh, the Palace of Westminster. Uh, Amaterasu starts off with Himeji Castle. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and get started. 
So they like said that your goal is to make it to make it through the all hundred years. So when you start off, you start off with this map. You have one little block, and you have to kind of develop it. So it says, Amaterasu here is like, hey, nice to meet you. You can create a structure here. You can develop this land. And you notice we start off with food and production. Um, 100 each. Actually, is, is my... Uh, uh, okay, my header is slightly covering us. I'm going to temporarily disable so you guys can see that part. But yeah, as you can see there, there's food and production at the top, which is my currency. I get plus five every year. That means you only do each turn is basically a year. And I have no culture because I have nothing generates it. So um, as I build stuff, I have to keep an eye on that. And it tells you there are 100 years left at the top, which means I have 100 turns to complete this map. So we're going to start off here with the planes, create a structure, and you can choose between uh, mining or farmland. You generally want to do farmland first because the food um, is more important. And you notice here it says it's going to use up 10 production to create a farmland that will give you an extra 5 food every year. So go ahead and establish that. And it says, okay, see at the top, um, now I've got 90 production and 100 food. I know you guys can't actually see that through my header, so I apologize about that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do something real quick with my uh, with my screen. I normally don't shrink my screen down, but um, we're gonna shrink it down just slightly so you guys can see this today. I know it's gonna look a little weird on the VOD later, but uh, there we go. I know it's gonna look a little weird on the VOD later, but I think this right here so you guys can see how everything progresses. It's easier if I do it this way. And then, okay, so it says here income. So I got 10 food because the farmland develops five food for me and I get 15, I get 15 production. Uh, I don't know where that came from, actually. I'm, the farm's not supposed to give me production. I should only have 95, unless it gave me a bonus somewhere. Oh. Receive the prayers for good harvest. So yeah, you also get offerings from the people. And then she's like, wait, I feel like I already know you. So yeah, your oracle talks to you each year. Um, and sometimes offers advice. So if you open up your offering here, it says, okay, you can um, get uh, gifts which can improve your stats. So here we'll take prayers for good harvest. And we get plus five on our... Uh, we get, we get a little bit extra food now. Now we can keep developing this, or we can open up a new uh, block. I'm going to open up a new block. So this one here says undeveloped, so you have to turn it into planes at the cost of 40 production. And again, that takes a year off of our, uh, off of our situation. And now we can build, um, I'm going to build a, 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 a mine here just so we can get that going. So we have one of each going now. That'll give a little bit more production. We used up some of our food, so it's pretty straightforward. And he says it's a very light, he says it's a very lightweight, like, pocket size thing. It's very easy. There's not a whole lot of, are you, are you really master? <laughs> And then we get another one here, uh, more bonus for our food. And then a random, like, little blurb there. Alright, so the farmland, we can upgrade it now, if we want to, so we can go to an estate, or we can go to a pasture. I'm going to go to route of pasture. This will give us a little bit of a boost. It does cost a little bit, but... We meet again. I'm over the moon. <laughs> and then again, get the gift from the people. So you want to take your gift whenever possible. And the mine, we're going to go do a quarry so we can get more production.
and let's see we're gonna open up another spot here this one's a quarry it requires 320 food we don't have that yet so that requires 320 production a windmill we have nothing we're close to that so as you can see different plots require different um different stuff. We'll just open up this plane here so we can get another farm going. Now, as you can see, we got a lot more production now because we have that pasture going, but we don't have a lot of food, so... I kept looking forward to seeing you again, so she's like... <laughs> so this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do another farm lane because we want to get some more food going. Because we are already running kind of low on food. The whole time I've been waiting in Dark Cave. <laughs> you can see there's a little bit of a story with her about, you know, she tells you a story while you're doing this. Alright, the pasture we can upgrade again. We can go for Orchard or we can go for Windmill. Um, I'm actually going to do Orchard. And that'll give us, we're running out of food. <laughs> And, and then every once in a while she'll just pop up here say I found something for you and then you get like a little bit extra production found it down the pathway <laughs> and so here we're gonna go the route of the farm estate this will make our food go up faster Surfs. So we get another little bonus gift here. Now the farm estate we can produce into a winery or we can produce into a water wheel. Unfortunately we don't have enough food for that. Either way we do it. The orchard the same thing. We can go to uh, we can create one of two of these legacy landmarks. We can uh, make Chichen Itza, which is going to give us more farmland. It's going to boost farmland by 40, by a factor of 40. Or we can create Seven, which is boost four orchards by a factor of 40. So you have to remember those multipliers when you build stuff. So if you want to make sure that you do, um, to take advantage of those, you want to make sure. So if you do Seven, you Seven, uh, Seven. I'm calling this event because I don't know how to pronounce this French. Um, it takes a thousand production, but every time you build an orchard, you get plus, you get a factor, a multiplicate, a multi multiplier of 40. Ugh, I can't talk. But we can't do anything with either of those right now. Um, we'll do this next one. Again, 40 food. We need a lot more food, unfortunately, so we're going to build another. Um, we're going to build uh, more farm lane here because we need to get the food going. And the music in the game changes every so often too. Let's work together again! <laughs> uh, I'm going to make another farm mistake because I want to get the food production up faster. It is taking food to do this, but I'm going to get more food and then we'll work on doing more production related stuff and give my food a chance to kind of grow a little bit. So the quarry here, we can upgrade this as well. So we can go to a coal mine or we can go to a sand mine. Now the interesting thing about the sand mine, it does give you food. Um, the coal mine is solid production. So, like, so right now I'm going to do sand mine because... I'm trying to get more food production. There we go. And the sand mine can be built to Himeji Castle, which produce all the production of sand mines go up, or Taj Mahal, which the production of all quarries goes up. So that's again, that's another thing that you have to be aware of. Like, do you want to go quarry or do you want to go sand mines? And, you know, like you say, you can get the multiplier that way. 
And you can see here, it's not quite time to develop this area yet. We can't do the mountain because it's a special area. Now, if you have to, you can skip, uh, skip a turn to build up money or build up food or production. This one says go straight to farm lane for 160 production. We're going to do that. And I said it doesn't hurt to skip a couple of turns if you have to. What do I need? I need a thousand production for that. Uh, okay, now the water wheel is something I'm going to do because I want to do at least... Well, I'm going to actually wait a turn and I'm going to get the uh, the winery. So you skip a turn. Oh, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. I forgot how to skip a turn. Um... It took me a minute. I had to remember how to open up the bloody menu on the side. Alright, so we skipped the turn so we get 190 food. Now we're going to turn this into a winery. More food and some production stall. And then this we're going to turn into a water wheel. So to give us... We'll lose some food, but we'll gain some production. You need, you kind of need one of each, so... And you see, my food's pretty weak. <laughs> and the winery you can turn into the Palace of Versailles, which is a uh, 30, 30 times boost on winery production. Or you can do uh, send, a, send, a, send a million, which is... Uh, food production in the winery, so it's very important there to decide which one you want. The water wheel, you can do the lighthouse, which gives you production on water wheels, or you can create the hanging gardens, which will... Uh, the water wheels will give you, like, culture. So again, just something that you need to think about while you're playing the game. So we're gonna do another farm estate. Trying to try to generate some food here. Now this here is called a settlement. The settlement gives you culture. It doesn't have any other effect, but just giving people a place to live will improve your culture, and then it says your culture can help you advance other stuff too. So it does use up most of our food, but. Giving our people a place to live. And then, of course, we get another offering because we gave them a place to live. And this is going to take 20 food and 20 production to convert into planes, so we'll do that. I found something cool. Production plus 20. Nice. And then... There are way more settlements now, courtesy of you, but if I were you, I'd start changing up some of these planes. <laughs> yeah, she tells you when you need to start actually doing other stuff, so... Let's see. Uh, we'll do the mine on this one this time. Because we only had the one mine, so... I'm going to upgrade this from the path of the workshop. And this will provide us a little bit more food.
And there's our next offering. Now we can go the way of the factory, or we can go the way of the library. The library will give us culture as well as production. The factory will be straight up production. We're going to do the library first. I can actually send message to prophets. <laughs> and library doesn't go any further. At least, not that I know of. Some more farmland? Cost us 80 food for it, but we'll go ahead and do it. As you can see, the game's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Like I said, it was designed for a console, so it's not too crazy. And we've already gone through 24 turns. Or 23 turns, so... We're gonna... Can we develop these planes? 2020? Okay, we'll do that. I still need a thousand for the orchards. There. What about this? I need I need thousands of production right now. So I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna find something that'll let me get straight production. This is a quarry. 320 food. I don't have that. Settlement. Potential mine. All right, this is a regular mine. 160 food though, but we need it. Let's see. I'm gonna go farm estate again. more mining here. Yeah, you can see our production's pretty... It's, all, it's almost at 100 now. But we can make civilizations fall as well as rise. <laughs> Let me do winery over here. So we have more food production there. Do another workshop. And I can't do the factory because I don't have enough food, so... Let's see, potential village. Uh, oh, that's... I don't want that one yet. Settlement. Village. Farmland. Yeah, we'll do the farmland because it's used in production. Oh, what happened? What happened? Okay, that was weird. I didn't hit... Okay, that's never happened before. I went to hit this and the game like flipped out on me. That was weird. Undeveloped planes, so you have 40 food. <laughs> Everything eats up my food right now. But if we get our production up to a thousand, then I'll be able to use that to do more stuff, so. Potential mines. More food. Okay, so now we have a thousand production. Yeah, I found something. What do we got? More production. Cool. 
So Matarasu, and you notice the background changes too, it kind of like a civilization progress, you get like a different background after so many turns. Alright, so the winery, how many wineries do I have? I have the one winery. Alright. So we're going to take the winery here. We're going to turn it into uh, then a million and get the, uh, the the 30 times boost on winery production for food. a few extra wineries to take advantage of that. Didn't I make a factory already? That's a library. Sand mine. Oh, that's another farm estate. That's right. We get the winery going. So our food production is in 170 now. Oh yeah, we can build the settlement again, right? Yeah, get it up to the village. And I think it goes up again. So yeah, we can go town or fortress. We're gonna do fortress so we can get some production while we're getting culture. And then here, if we want to take it even further, we can do castle, which will give us uh, more culture and keep the production, or we can change a citadel for food. We'll go. We'll go, uh, we'll go castle. It gives us more culture and keep our production score. And then finally, castle can change into the Forbidden City for 100 culture, which uh, gives all of our castles a 10 times culture boost, but I'm not going to worry about making Forbidden City. Another settlement here. So we got 60 turns left, give or take, so. And again, we're gonna make another, we're gonna make another winery here. Hey, you're, you're always so good at this. <laughs> The other special landforms you can reclaim. All right, another winery. Now you can't. I think you can put more than one of the winery things up here to give it like a double boost. But we're good there for now. Potential village. Six hundred production and sixty culture. I don't want to waste my production on that just yet. Um, See, we need workshop. I have to go to the way of the factory this time. So. There's some legacies made just for me. Maybe I should go look for them. Yeah, we'll do factory now. I have plenty of food now because I'm getting 220 a year. So. We're done with the factory, we can't go any further there, so it's fine. Let's see, where's that one mine at over here? Sand mine? 
Like, if we could do Himiji Castle, it'd give us more sand mine production, which I'm going to do that. And that's her personal structure. And we'll turn that into a quarry. I think the quarry goes the other way, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't go towards the sand mine. Oh it does. Now we can turn this into the sand mine. So this will give us more production out of the sand mine. The same thing here, we're gonna go the way of the quarry here and make another sand mine. But you wanna take advantage of your legacies by building stuff to go with them. Master, Master, civilization has entered the Golden Age. Civilization grows so much really quickly. Golden Ages can turn out in different ways. Production's going up by a lot. Let's keep our eyes on it. So yeah, during the Golden Age, our production's going to get a boost, so we'll be able to do more with it. A coal mine? Yeah, we'll do it. And with the coal mine, we can create a pyramid, which, uh... Quarries will offer food. Specifically, quarries. Not gonna worry about that, though. Let's see, this is a pasture. We'll go ahead and do that. This is going to go straight to an orchard. Actually, no, we need to do a windmill. Never mind. We got to do one windmill. Tamagahara. Oh, Taka, Taka, Takaga, oh boy. So with the windmill, I can do Amsterdam to either make my uh, windmills produce more photo or produce or have more production. But, let's see, what's this again? The village? We'll go ahead and do this one now, that we can. The Golden Age is over. But we have another... We have another level 2 village here. Oh, look, we found something. And we got more production. Cool. And we have Ruins of City. So we get a little bit extra culture boost. So we're gonna go town this time. And town becomes a temple or a city. So you can do city to get food on top of culture. You can do temple for pure culture. I'm going to do the city. More food production is good. And we can't go any further there. Another settlement will be that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up some of these other spots that I haven't been using, so. Got a pasture, we'll do that. Go to ride of the orchard this time. And we can get more food from the orchards if we do this. I can build a couple of orchards if I want to, but let's see. Island? I need production and culture like crazy, so. Um Okay, we got a windmill here, we can do that. Got a plane for 10 culture, no problem. 
I need to actually get some more culture boosts, so I'm actually gonna try to work on some of these other villages and things. again. And see, last time we went castle, this time we'll go citadel. In citadel, we can do oh, Alhambra for Food for citadels or production for with the Hagia Sophia. We're not going to do that. Uh, what's this? Oh, a plane that we didn't do. Okay. We're going to get this another sand mine going over here. We've only got 34 years left. As you guys can see, once you get going, it's very, very quick. People were really having to call the festival. Ninami no Matsuri. I don't know what the hell that is. We're gonna do another quarry and get another sand mine going so we can take advantage of that boost that we got. Festival's all about thanking you and offering some of the first harvests of the season. Alright, another sand mine. We got an offering too, so we gotta go collect our offerings. So we got the grain mill, we'll collect that. Fruit wine, we'll collect that. Black diamond ore, we'll collect that. Water wave, we'll collect that. Vineyard, we'll collect that. Factory. This is how you get a bonus <laughs> on all your stuff. Build a city. I thought I did. You can build it again, okay. If I forgot in the promo, I wonder what happened there. Ivan, thank you for the four month reset, brother. Welcome back. How you doing? Hey. Right. Uh what was I working on over here? Oh yeah, I was going to get the plane upgraded. We're going to go to the route of farmland here. Thank you, thank you very much, brother. Not really good? That yeah, sucks, man. I hope it gets better for you. So yeah, guys, I'm going to crank out another winery here. Or not another, yeah. I got another winery. Like I said, we want to take advantage of my boost. Yeah, yeah health problems suck. I know from experience. Hopefully, hopefully though, you'll be able to get something to help. Hopefully, some good will come to you. Yeah, guys, as you can tell, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna crank the hell out of uh, some. Um, vineyards now because we're getting down to 25 years. We're almost done. 75 years have gone by in the blink of an eye. Look how far the world has come. I am going to try to unlock everything else though, so that's what at least like half of my time left, so. A pasture, we'll do it. Oof. I definitely know that feeling, man. So you know what we're doing before I run out of time? I'm gonna open up the rest of these places here. Hopefully I'll have enough culture to unlock some of the special stuff. My day's actually going pretty good. I had a good session at my, uh, my physical therapy. The mountain, can I unlock it? I can. So right here, the mountain, anything that gives culture, um, we get... 
one half whatever the culture from the stuff nearby, so... That gives us, uh... That gives us something special there from the... Let's see, it says adjacent, so it'll be from the Citadel here. And we can turn this into even more. So if we want to upgrade, like, food production... If we can upgrade food, we can upgrade production. We can use Machu Picchu to Great Wall of China. So if we take a look at what we have here, we have a, a legacy, we have production, we have food, and we have that. So if I was going to turn this into something, I would turn it into the Great Wall of China for the food production. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is. All right, this is a settlement, so we'll go ahead and get that going. Okay, so I want to unlock everything else. Master! What do we got? Another Golden Age. More production on this Golden Age, so... Farmland? We'll do that. Alright, so these ones here... I want to turn these into orchards. Do I have the thing that gives me an orchard boost? That's the winery boost. Quarry? Excellent. We can get another sand mine going. We definitely want the sand mine. Oh, we got plus two culture. Nice. Watch this uh, anime version of the civilization. That's funny. Oh, you mean this thing? Yeah. Alright, let's get the settlement upgraded. Yeah, it kind of in a nutshell is what it is. It's, a, it's what they call a pocket-sized version of a civilization builder. It's a very, uh, it's pretty much an easy, really easy game to play. Let's see, do town. I think we have to go to Route of the Temple still. Alright, we got the city thing. Yeah, we gotta go to Route of the Temple. Have any other castles? Let's see. Oh, this is settlement we still have to build up too. Damn. What's the temple like, though? Can it, what can I upgrade? The uh, temple doesn't upgrade up there. Let's see. What's the island give us? All food adjacent to a production divided by two. Let's go for it. We got plenty of food production around it. Does the island give us anything? No. Nope. Uh, Amatsuru is starting to get sad. It's, our time's almost up. So we got 10 years left, guys. I gotta try to build everything else up. Hey, master. <laughs> I get the settlement. I want to unlock the whole map before the time timer's up. Some farmland. A mine. Coal mine. This goes straight up to a coal mine, so that's not bad. Uh, 
A quarry? Excellent. Yeah, Madara's just trying to get sad. She's like, our time's almost up. Alright, sand mine. Get that all the way up. Get the farmland up on pasture here. Get the settlements up a little bit more. I want to get a little bit more culture in this place before time ends. So we're down to the last couple of years, guys. Game's almost over for this run. I can't wait till the day I see you can see you again. Yeah, she's getting really super sad. Yeah, so we'll go fortress again. Master, thank you for the time you spent with me. I'm better off for having been with you until now. Production plus 200. Small token of my appreciation. Thank you for giving me your time. I can't wait till we see each other again someday. She's super sad. I'll wait for I'll wait forever and ever until that day. All right, last one. We're gonna go Citadel. This is our final act. And that's it, guys. That's 100 years. This is your civilization hundreds and thousands of years later. See if we did how good we did. Prosperous as ever. People are full of life and energy. Their crops are abundant and they're surrounded by plentiful resources. With luck, they'll last for an eternity. That is the will and wish of all. So here we go. Well, we did better. My culture rating is still at C, though. I think it's because I had, I did I wasn't able to collect at least a thousand yet. I'm not sure. But yeah, you get a rating depending on how many resources you collected. So over the course of the thing, I had twenty-one thousand some food, eighteen thousand. My land rating, uh, depending on like the stuff that I developed, and. Uh, my overall rating at the end so there's a way to get a better rating like you can get like I, I think an a rating or maybe like an s rank s rank would be a thing uh and once you go to the next part uh the oracle's growth your oracle will get more um you'll get more production based on your goddess's level so since now she's level three you get like a plus you get like plus uh, 30 per, you get like, uh, you know, so you get a little bit there and then legacy growth because you did Himeji Castle, the next time you use it will have a little bit more of an effect, so. Well, they said if you do really badly, um, that you can't get like, um, uh, un you know, like an ending that says you did bad. And we unlock the next goddess, Gaia, from Greek mythology. So if I wanted to, I could play the next, um, the next goddess. Like I said, you can go back in and pick your next world. So the world of culture was the one I unlocked the first time I played, and that was with uh, Arianrod. So, and this tells you what you did last time. So as you can see, the rest of these are like all different. Like, so you have a uh, a world of water, mountains and dense mountains and dense forest, an empty world, a mysteriously blank slate world, fantasy world, infinite growth. Are right, you gonna go to sleep, all right, man? Take care. Hopefully your pain gets better, and hope Doc's able to help you out. The goddesses world, a world of plains, a world of learning, wasteland, and nature. So there's plenty of different worlds you can unlock. They say you unlock all the goddesses too. So there's replayability in it. But yeah, that's that's one game in a nutshell, guys. Fits right into like a you know a quick little. I think that was about 45 minutes, give or take. So yeah. But yeah. Overall, um, game plays well. Uh, I don't have any 
issues with it at all, really. The only thing that bothers me is the controller. And it, it is a controller game, guys, if you couldn't obviously tell. But, like, sometimes hitting left, right, up, and down because the grid is slanted, like, it doesn't always go where it's supposed to, but it's, you know I mean? And the cool thing is, because it is a lightweight, like, pocket-sized game, like, it's very approachable to anybody. Like, you know, somebody who's not familiar with these games, very easily pick it up. If you're, like, really hardcore into these games, this might feel like a little bit of a soft game to you, because there's not a whole lot to do, other than, like, pick out your specific building path like you know to build like a castle to do certain things and you'll build all the smaller lesser structures to go with it and stuff like that so i mean you can the, the limitation of it obviously you only get 100 turns so you have to do everything you want to do within those 100 turns um but yeah it's they say it's 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 not a bad game i mean honestly like you know it, it's a, because of the fact it's relatively short like like i said it's a short game I mean, what, 45 minutes to do a whole campaign? And then you go back and replay it over and over again and improve your score. So if you're a score chaser, there's something for you. If you just want something that's relatively easy, there's something for you. Um, you know, you know, if you're a parent with kids and you need a game that isn't continually requiring your attention, you can always stop it and come back. I mean, it's really, it's a made-for-everybody game. Um, whether or not everybody want to play, it's a different story, but... The game was released on PC February 2nd, so it hasn't been out for more than a couple weeks. Um, cost on is $12.99. Yeah, not, not a bad deal. Not a bad deal for a game that can be played, be played continually. So, yeah, I mean, recommend it? Yeah, I, I recommend it. I recommend it to y'all. Now, you see, even if you're into the more hardcore, like, civilization building games, I think this is a nice break from those. And like I said, if you're somebody who just... If, if you're somebody who likes anime graphics, you'll like it too, so yeah. Anyway guys, as always, uh, everybody on Twitch hang out. We're gonna go uh, we're gonna go do some other stuff. Uh, everybody, YouTube, if you made it to the end of the VOD, thank you very much as always. I appreciate y'all. Uh, links down below, as always. Be sure to leave a comment, hit like on it, uh, and let me know what you think. And yeah, we shall see y'all next time. Have a good one. Peace.